This campaign needed the common touch of a working man. <laughs> After all, it began so long ago with a heralded arrival of a man known to Oprah Winfrey as the one. <laughs> Being a friend and colleague of Barack, I just called him that one. <laughs> he... My friends, he doesn't mind at all. In fact, he even has a pet name for me, George Bush. <laughs> In that kind of contest, and I come here tonight to the Al Smith Dinner knowing that I'm the underdog in these final weeks, but if you know where to look, there are signs of hope. There are signs of hope, even in the most unexpected places, even in this room full of proud Manhattan Democrats. I can't, I can't shake that feeling that some people here are pulling for me. <laughs> I'm delighted to see you here tonight, Hillary. <laughs> Where's Bill, by the way? Can't he take one night off from his tireless quest to make the man who defeated his wife the next president? <laughs> the man is a relentless advocate for the Obama campaign, and he has a subtle approach to making the case. When a reporter asked him if Senator Obama was qualified to be president, Bill Clinton pointed out, sure, he's over 35 years of age and a U.S. citizen. <laughs> He was pandering to the strict constructionist crowd. <laughs> He's also been hammering away at me with epithets like American hero and great man. And with all the cameras running, he warmly embraced me at that global initiative of his. My friends, this is nothing but a brazen attempt to suppress turnout among anti-Clinton conservatives. <laughs> Finally, when Larry King asked President Clinton a couple of weeks ago what was the delay and why he wasn't out there on the trail for Barack, Bill said his hands were tied until the end of the Jewish high holidays. <laughs> now, you, you got to admire that ecumenical spirit. I just know Bill would like to be out there now, stumping for Barack until the last hour of the last day. Unfortunately, he is constrained by his respect for any voters who might be observing the Zoroastrian New Year. <laughs> you know? Some... Some advocates for Senator Obama are less restrained in their enthusiasm, even in the media. Over, I, he usually is at table 228, for example, it was my old friend and green room pal, Chris Matthews. He used to like me, but he found somebody new. Somebody who opened his eyes, so somebody who gave him a thrill up his leg. And we've talked about it. I told him, Maverick I can do, but Messiah is above my pay grade. You know? It's going to be a long, long night at MSNBC if I manage to pull this thing off. <laughs> For starters... I understand that Keith Oberman has ordered up his very own Mission Accomplished banner. <laughs> and they can hang that in whatever padded room has been reserved for him. <laughs> Seriously, Chris, if they need any decorating advice on that banner, ask Keith to call me so I can tell him right where to put it. <laughs> so
So, you know, I have fun with the media, and we all, we all know the press is really an independent, civic-minded, and nonpartisan group. <laughs> like Acorn. <laughs> In case you haven't, in case you haven't been following my opponent's get out the vote campaign, Acorn is helping to register groups previously excluded, overlooked, and underserved. Second graders, the, the deceased, Disney characters. In Florida, they even turned up an Acorn voter registration form that bore the name of one Mickey Mouse. We're checking the paw prints. <laughs> anyway, we all know that Senator Obama is ready for any contingency, even the possibility of a sudden and dramatic market rebound. I'm told that at the first sign of recovery, he will suspend his campaign and fly immediately to Washington to address this crisis. <laughs> All this will be for the voters to decide very soon. And though I do trust we can keep the turnout amongst deceased and fictional voters to a minimum, <laughs> I've come out on both sides of elections, and I've never lost my confidence in the judgment of the American people. With that, my friends, let me make way for my opponent, who tonight is making a comedy debut that I guess we could call the final test of this campaign. <laughs> Now, a copy of the Senator's comedy routine was left on the table this evening. And I have to confess, Your Eminence, I looked at it. <laughs> now, of course, it would be unfair and even a little unkind to put my opponent on the spot before he gets up here, or to throw him off his game with unreasonably high expectations. <laughs> but I do need to warn you, ladies and gentlemen, you all are, are all out about to witness the funniest performance in the, in the 63 year history of this event. Let's, let's not add to the mounting pressure he must be feeling. Just prepare yourself for nonstop hilarity. the funniest 15 minutes of your life or any other. I think he knows that anything short of that would mar the evening, insult our hosts, and perhaps even cost him several swing states. Senator Obama, the microphone is all yours. An acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. Who's gonna lead the U.S.? Everybody gonna say McCain. Respectfully, cause these Democrats can't mess with me. Advisor said to me, hey, John, John, let's drop a huge bomb, bomb. POW from Nom Nom, paired with a hockey mom, mom. Left wingers, I know what you're thinking. Butch part two, Democrats singing. No answers, had cancer, gonna drop dead as soon as I square in. So what's your opinion about McCain winning? And grin and know the ropes, cause this ain't the first race I've been in. And you think my record's broke? Cause of what my opponent spoke <laughs> And I promise you, you don't know Cause you get all your news from the Daily Show <laughs> But I'm not to the right, it's all that Towards the middle's how I steer it But I still talk that right-wing flash Cause lots of Republicans wanna hear it And I'm feeling like Ron is greatest Like I'm gonna make this And I know I'm winning So to heck with media spinning Put me on the ticket and we'll win this race Take me to the White House, Mr. John McCain Who is Barack Obama? After college, he moved to Chicago, became a community organizer. There, Obama met Madeleine Talbot, part of the Chicago branch of ACORN. He was so impressive that he was asked to train the ACORN staff. What did ACORN in Chicago engage in? Bullying banks, intimidation tactics, disruption of business. ACORN forced banks to issue risky home loans. 
the same types of loans that caused the financial crisis we're in today. No wonder Obama's campaign is trying to distance him from the group, saying Barack Obama never organized with ACORN. But Obama's ties to ACORN run long and deep. He taught classes for ACORN. They even endorsed him for president. But now, ACORN is in trouble. There are at least 11 investigations across the country involving thousands of potentially fraudulent ACORN forms. Massive voter fraud. And the Obama campaign paid more than $800,000 to an ACORN front for get-out-the-vote efforts, pressuring banks to issue risky loans. Nationwide voter fraud. New evidence tonight that the so-called community uh, left-wing activist group ACORN is involved in widespread voter registration fraud. In point of fact, ACORN is a left-wing special interest group that's been under investigation.